Hello, welcome to another show. I'm Sid and in today's video I'll be going over the process of exporting 3D models from Blender and importing them into Spark AR Studio for use in your filters on Instagram and Facebook. To be clear this is not a Blender tutorial although I will link to the one that I followed to create this donut uh, which I highly recommend. It's very useful. It's quite long and detailed but it does give some key like baseline tips I guess like the good resource guide for how to create really any model using the fundamentals of what you can learn in these tutorials. So I'll link to that, it's by the Blender Guru. Uh, it's very popular, I think it's the first thing most people use when they learn Blender. So yeah, that'll be linked below. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to export what, what file formats I'm using with Spark AR to get everything in here and working. And then I'm going to go do a quick run through of the textures, how to adjust them, change them, and finally just some quick interactions that you can do. This one here is to demonstrate like the gloss and the shine of the icing versus the like bready texture of the bottom. It's very cartoony, it's not overly complicated, but uh, you kind of get what I'm going for. With that being said, I'll pause this, create a new project, and I'll minimize that one. Switch back over to my camera. Hello. And now I'm going to slide over to this Blender file, uh, Blender project which I have open, donut.blend. It's my first project. I created this donut and it's sitting on a plane. So we have the donut texture, the icing, and finally all of these sprinkles which sit on top. As you can see, the sprinkles are right now uh, all different colors randomly scattered across the icing, uh, which is fine in here because I'm using, if you follow in the tutorial and you've, uh, if you follow the Blender Guru's tutorials and you're at that point, you have this model, uh, then you'll be aware that I'm using a color ramp, which is the shading mod, similar to the patch editor in Spark, but it randomizes the color of something. Uh, so in this case, it's the sprinkles, it's just randomly and then distributing them across the model. Uh, that doesn't export. Uh, so when you export, so that's why uh, in this project over here, I have these blue sprinkles, they're all uniform blue. Even if I come in here and I show you, I have a whole bunch of uh, like different sprinkles things. I can adjust them, but they don't. It doesn't work the way you'd expect. And I'll show you. I'll show you why not in a minute. But uh, yeah, I haven't quite figured that out yet. It's probably something that you could do with JavaScript. Uh, although maybe as I go further into tutorials, I'll come up with some alternative solution. Uh, one thing that was recommended in the videos was to uh, create a bunch of individual. Uh, versions of your sprinkles, duplicate them and then randomly assign them but apparently that's quite long and complicated so I didn't go for that I just wanted the simple version for now. Also another thing is when you import when you export in uh, from Blender and import into Spark AR uh, the tutorial that I followed, the guru tutorial <laughs> call him the guru now, he, I guess it's the Blender guru you gotta call him that uh, but in his tutorial, he recommends things like this, which is like duplicating the donut and the icing and different layers as you're creating them and archiving them as these invisible layers. So taking this and going, all right, so I've got a duplicate of my donut, a backup in case anything goes wrong, I need to go back, but it's invisible and it can't be seen in the project right now. That may be the case when you render it inside of Blender, but when you export as an object file, it will export every single, uh, object that you where am I every yeah, I haven't got it yet every single object that is in this scene collection including the plane everything even if you make it invisible it will export it so if we do this now we'll export this you see that we have a couple options some of them you'll recognize if you've been using the uh, reference asset pack so we have dot DAE dot uh, FBX which is sim the same one as the iris from the eye changing videos uh, but the one we're going to be using today is the wavefront.objectfile.obj. If I export that to the desktop, you'll just see we have this option. Donut.obj is what it's going to be called, so we'll export that file. And I'll show you. This is sort of things that I realized as I was going along. So like the, uh, the, the plane being imported and the archive and all those things. And how, as you're following the tutorial, you might be confused when these things pop up. But like... It's not such a big deal and it's easily fixed. You can even delete them inside of like, nope, that was the wrong place. 100% the wrong place to put it. <laughs> Maybe it'll go in there, we'll see. In the meantime, I'm gonna add a face tracker to the scene, just up here. So we've got that ready to go. 
Uh, yeah, so I already added it. You see the planers here, just as I said. I'm going to import this, make it on the face tracker, so it's tracking my face. What you can do now is drop down this menu and you'll see all of the individual, uh, I don't know what they're called, objects that, you, that I've been using. So you have the plane itself, which you can just delete. Now that's gone. And we just have the donut. But as you can see, I also have these two, uh, like, grayed out beige looking ones from my archive, which I also don't want. So I can delete those. Uh, now I'm getting somewhere a little bit closer. Maybe I want to rotate this, and get a little bit better look of it. So I've come like this. Oh, look, nice donut. What else have I got? So I've got all of these sprinkles here. So what these are is where I've created the random uh, color patch. Where's my blender thing? Where I've created the random color ramp with the shading and the patch thing in here, the patch nodes inside of Blender. Where I've done that, it's created all of these individual sprinkles, these tiny little sprinkles, which I've buried inside of the model. So if you have your model uh, just in layout, you probably have all of these individual sprinkles, which if I click on them here, you'll see them just like tiny little sprinkles, just one. And those are the ones that have been duplicated and placed all over the donut uh, and randomly colored. So there's only like five of them, but they've just been duplicated a whole bunch of times. Uh, that is the same thing that's happened here, except the color ramp hasn't been included. So none of those patches are changing the colors. So they're all just blue and they've all been assigned the same material. So we have actually got our plain material down here, which we can also delete now. Uh, and we have uh, our sprinkle material. So you can actually see this one here with all of them collected under the same material. You can keep that one and just delete the other four. So those are the little ones that you've now deleted. So what you're left with is the donut itself, the icing, and the sprinkles. Now I haven't figured out a way to change the color yet. Like I said, it's probably something to do with JavaScript. Uh, and I'm working on that, but I can't really get it like running right inside of Spark yet. So bear with me on that one. But uh, as I said, the other option would be to uh, manually do it which is referenced in the Blender Guru's tutorials as a way that he did in a previous version of the same tutorial a couple years ago, but I wasn't able to find it myself, so I'm still trying to figure that out. But ultimately, I don't think it's that important because what I'm really showing you here is how to import the file, how to export the file, which file formats to use, and once you've got it in there, some of the different things that you can do with 3D models. It's not so much about the donut as the 3D model itself. Like, now that you know how to make them, what can you make, how can you bring it in, and how can you... Uh, make use of it with the Spark AR features that you have available to you. So, for example, we have our donut, uh, the icing. We'll rename all of these as well. Maybe. Oh no, sorry. Right now, uh, all of our materials are nested inside of this object and this donut as part of the 3D object that we've imported. So, what we're going to do is control select all of these three. I'm going to change the shader type from standard to physically based because it's donut, it's very much a physically based object. And as you can see, it's now separated those three materials out into the separate materials folder. And there's our original grayed out donut from our archive, which we can also delete now. So this is all we have left. We've simplified everything up. You can obviously delete all of these inside of the Blender project uh, and then export it, but it's probably a little bit simpler to do it in here because then you have all of those original files unedited that you can go back to and change like uh, like I guess any good archive should be. This is more of like the test bed. You can copy this, move things around, but all of your original project files are where you left them. So now I'll rename this icing, donut, and sprinkles. So for this one, we can do an environment texture. So we'll add our environment preset. I like to use machine shop because it's quite bright and it just pops. So we'll add that machine shop. See it gives that nice sparkly pink donut look. You can adjust the metallic a little bit. We can make it shinier or smoother. Icing has like a little bit of like a f like not not quite super shiny but I guess there you know it's there. And then we'll change the color on that. We'll make it I guess pink. I'm having a little bit of lag, but bear with me. That's kind of gross looking. Yeah, that works, pink. And then we could do the same with the donut, but you can uh, 
have it to be a slightly different environment texture. So let's say we do gray pier for this one. here so now we can increase the metallic we can have a super shiny chrome donut if you're making a robot that would be cool if you're making some sort of machine based object that would be a cool way to texture it but uh, I think mostly we're just going to be adding some rough a little bit of this not not enough to like give it a shine but just so that you can tell there's some depth there and we're going to change the color something closer to yellow like this but maybe slightly darker like that I don't know and we'll do the same with our sprinkles now the sprinkle is probably going to be totally rough uh, we'll do an environment texture for those but we'll just use one that we already have and then I will change the color I'll make them super bright but not like weirdly bright <laughs> something like that and there we go that's all of our donut textured Oh, that's my phone popping off. SoundCloud. I have no friends. <laughs> so now that we have our donut uh, textured and imported and everything's looking good, we can uh, create a patch to add some interaction. So I'm going to return this to a uh, rotation of zero because I remember I rotated it earlier. So I'm just going to put that back to where it was. And in fact, I'm going to do 90 degrees. So now it's facing the camera like this. And now I'm going to open the patch editor, I'm going to add a screen tap by double tapping on the patch editor, opening this menu and typing screen tap into the search box. I'm going to drag out from that to a switch, which I'm going to drag out from, and that's going to activate a pulse, which I'm going to connect an animation. And I'm going to make sure it's reversible. And I'm going to connect that to a transition. And then I'm going to uh, connect my rotation up here. Based on that, I'm going to go 90 here to start. And then here we're going to end. Oh, we'll set all of these to zero. Uh, I think that one's going to be 180, I think. So we'll see if that works now. It's a, very, it's a bit different, but <laughs> that's what I was going for. Uh, so what would this be? Is it the Z axis? I'm a little bit confused on the axis thing. <laughs> it never does what I want. Oh, is it because it's linear? I need it to be like quadratic in and out. No, see, even I'm learning, but... I had it set up all good and proper over here. Uh, basically, I had it to where it's directly in front of my head. You know, I could probably just do this very quickly. So basically, what I had was it's right in front of my head. Sorry, this has fallen off the rails a bit, but I suppose we're all learning together. And then, no. See, I'm losing it because I'm freaking out. <laughs> so we connect this up now. And we'll start this here and we'll just have it go to like minus 180. And now it rotates. Like this is what I had originally intended. So if we start at 90 and it rotates, then we want it to go to minus 90. There it is. So that's what I had on this other one. It's 90 degrees, rotating 90 degrees the other way pretty simple there's nothing major to it it's just a couple of simple patches nothing that we haven't learned before it's just a all-round way to include to conclude everything you can even do something like this you can come up here to the donut inside the face tracker and under actions you can just position it on the face so you can say like hey I want this right over my eye and just like that it will create all of these patches automatically with the 3d position all set up and you can adjust it so that when you click on it it does all this and it's you know what I mean like there's a lot of interactive stuff you can do it doesn't have to be a donut the donut is very much the basic ingredient of all of this once you can make that you can more or less do anything I'd be very interested to see uh, anything that you guys make link me on Instagram if you make any filters I'd be happy to check them out it'd be super cool to look at some uh, new stuff uh, that's pretty much the entire video so I'm gonna say 
uh, leave a comment if you enjoyed it leave a like don't forget to subscribe I'm almost at 100 and uh, peace see you next time